Hey, good afternoon. Hello. Good day, everyone. How's it going? All right. Well, it's February and we are edging ever so closer to Valentine's Day. I mean, outside my window right now, it is snowing big, beautiful, fluffy flakes. And I've got an accumulation building up on the windowsill. But in here, it is beautiful and warm and cozy. And I've got in front of me the card that we're going to be working on today. So now I did list in our description for the video everything that you need. But keep in mind, what I'm doing today is a little four by six card. Um, it is just some plain white card stock. Um, at one point in time, I ordered a bunch of these. I have like a hundred of these. <laughs> you don't need to go to those links. You don't even have to put this on a card. Um, you can do whatever you like. All right. The other part of this is any of the colors that I've chosen to use today, feel free to substitute them and use whatever you like. Okay. Um, last but not least, as far as tools are concerned, I am um, a fan and I always use my Happy Dotting Company tools. Uh, but again, use whatever you have. The only thing I will mention is that my tools are flat. So what I will tell you the sizes that I'm using for these. But keep in mind, if you're going to be using the ball headed tools, something like this, Keep in mind that the sizes are going to vary and potentially quite significantly. So um, I am going to go ahead and draw out our grid lines. And so you may just want to pay attention to the grid lines to help you adjust your sizes if you don't use the same tools that I do or if you don't use a flat headed tool like I am today. Okay, so uh, to get started for us today, Now, the heart that I've drawn, I'm going to tell you I cheat <laughs> because I can't, I can't freehand much of anything. Um, but I've got this heart drawn and it's about three and a half at its widest inches um, to about three and a half. Okay. So I've got this centered. This is going to be my center dot. This is about an inch and a half. Actually, no, I take that back. That's about a half an inch <laughs> from the curve here. Okay. Now I've marked that out in advance, but that's all I've done so far. Okay. So I'm going to use a couple of different, uh, just basic tools. Now, normally I would probably, because this is such a small project, I would just grab my helix and, um, and do it. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right now because I know not a lot of people have them. Um, and so I kind of want to use something that's going to be a little bit more familiar to everybody. Um, so I've got my dot here and I'm going to use an eight point grid today. All right, this eight point grid, I'm going to start out with a circle here. I also do have um, a compass and tractor. Okay, just quick and simple stuff. Okay. Um, I will start this way. So I'm going to line up the dot here. And then I'm going to look because I can see right here the dip of my heart and then the bottom, right? So I'm just going to essentially line that up. All right. Okay. And then we're going to do our lines here. Now, what I'm going to do is you're going to see I'm not going to make the lines. All right. But I am just going to roughly put in a little tiny mark where each of these meet the edge of my heart. Okay. Okay. All right. So now I should have those eight points here. Okay. Now you can use a ruler. You can use whatever you like. All right. But now I'm just going to take and line these up. Now this obviously didn't go all the way down, right? So we're going to extend it all the way down. Okay, so I'm going to get that right in the center. Okay. And we're going to take this one. We're going to wrap that all the, way, all the way across. Okay. 
I'm sure you get the point by now, right? Let's make sure that one's... Okay. Now I am doing in this in the heart shape, which can be a little funky. If you don't quite feel comfortable, you can absolutely do this just on a circle. Um, you just have to fill in the tops where I'm going to be missing those. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put that out of the way. All right. Let me set this aside. All right. Now, as far as my this is concerned, I'm going to do the inch side, but obviously you can use this here. So I'm going to start with around a two. I'm going to start out with the half. Okay. Now, this should come right to the dip where the heart meets. Oops, hold on. My camera's in the way and I'm afraid I'm going to hit you all in the face here. So that should make that one. Then I'm going to increase that again out to a one. And then we're going to do one and a half. If you are worried about the hole from the compass, obviously I should have said this about two seconds ago before I started. Um, the other thing that I actually do um, on pieces where I'm a little worried about it, or even if I do it on glass, because yeah, I, I use that on glass as well, um, is going to be just put a little bit of tape, like a little bit of painter's tape or sick tape on there. Then you don't have to worry about that. All right. And I am just doing these again at the half inch. All right. And this will be two and a half. Okay. And we're done there. Okay. All right. I'm going to get that put away. So now we should have this for today's paint. I'm gonna get these mixed. As you can hear the clicks, I have Decor Americana. Um, it's kind of my go-to, right? Glorious Gold, Gentle Heather, and Deep Burgundy. Um, if you happen to hear the click in each of these, I do have a quarter inch ball bearing. Um, you can find you know, they're also like nail polish agitators, whatever. I just got like a little packet of a hundred of them or 150 of them or something on Amazon. They work really well. Okay. All right. Let me get this added to the palette here. All right, okay. Now, as far as tool sizes are concerned today, we are going up to an eight. The eight is the largest size that I'm gonna be using. We will not be using a seven, um, but we will be using a six. Um, so we've got an eight, um, a jump to a six, a jump to probably a four, and then I've got pretty much everything else. <laughs> Three, two, uh, one, and zero, and in including the half steps. Um, I am also going to be using my handy dandy tool here. This is what I use for swooshes. Um, I do have a couple of sets of swooshes that we're going to be doing. Um, I also did go ahead and um, because I use this particular brand, um, I did go ahead and grab, sorry, my S2. We may want to use this one as well. Um, again, since this is going to actually be the same size as any other round tool, uh, you can also use just a two okay, if you're going to be using those. All right. Okay. Time to stop yakking and get to painting. I am going to start with an eight. Sorry, I always do that. 
right-handed and the tool numbers are upside down when I do that. So my apologies. Okay. Let's get into an eight here. I am going to start with this nice deep burgundy. Okay. We're going to go right smack center here. Okay. All right. I have next to me just a washcloth, an old one that I use with water and clean off my tools in between. Okay, so that eight, that's the only time we're ever going to use that. You can put that away if you want to. Okay, now we're going to go into a one. On an eight, you theoretically should be able to get about 20 dots around. Okay, all right. So we're going to go in. Now, if you feel a little more comfortable, you do not have to go up top and clockwise or counterclockwise around. Feel free to do it just by the compass points. That right there, that is 10 dots, and that's gonna bring you about halfway around. So if you're one of those people, you like to count it, um, that is certainly a way we can do that, all right? You should get about 20 dots around an eight. And again, this is tool size one. Now we're going to move out to a two. Oh, still have a little bit of paint on my two. All right, let me get that off. All right, so now I'm going to go into the gold. Now, again, um, if you're going to follow just the spaces here, you should be able to get about 16 dots. Okay, we're going to start this by dropping the first one. Doesn't matter where you go. Again, you can fold if you choose to. Um, but we're just going to put that in between. Now I am using this metallic gold. I considered using a different gold, but this one really shimmers and I think it adds a lot to the card or the design, whatever you happen to be doing it on. But feel free to change that up. I actually did one of these uh, with brown instead of gold. I actually used um, kind of a honey, kind of coppery, uh, not coppery, um, but sort of, I can't remember what the name of it is. I'm having a blank moment and I don't have the paint in front of me, um, but also a decor. I think it's honey brown or a champagne gold, something like that. Uh, that color combination also works really nicely. And yes, I know I wasn't paying attention and look, I got my center dot just slightly off, but it's not gonna make a difference. It's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna kill us. Okay, all right. Okay, so there's the two. Now, instead of going up to a full three, I'm gonna actually just go to five. So now we're going to go into a 2.5. We're going to follow the exact same rule. And I'm just going to get this here. I'm going to start right in between. Okay, 
and just light touches here. Okay, all right. Essentially, all you really need to be looking for is that this row stops at the top here. Okay, so as long as you've got that, we're good to go. If you're doing a heart. Now, because I'm doing a heart of this dimension, I don't expect very many people um, are gonna necessarily have this exact same dimension of a heart. Um, but again, it's three and a half by three and a half inches. Um, if you were to make a square here. Um, let's go into the next part. This is actually going to be my swooshes, okay? So we're gonna pick up a four, okay? If you're not great with swooshes yet, I am gonna take this very slow. If you're more proficient and you just wanna breeze through it, then breeze through it. Um, go ahead and do your lines and, and step away for a cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, um, I just want to make sure though that, that this is slow enough that if you are not 100% with your swooshes yet, that I get you through this. Okay, so we are going to go out uh, to this line here. Okay, and we're going to be putting our dot right along this line. Okay, again, we're going to go into a four, show it the other direction. And I've got my tool in hand uh, to do the two tool method. Again, if you're comfortable with the one tool and that's how you wanna do it, that's perfectly fine. Essentially, that's just putting the dot down and pulling it in, all right? But um, I'm gonna use the two, so let's do the two. Uh, let's go into the light pink here. Now, for this, we are gonna go ahead and follow our guidelines, okay? So let's start up here. We're going to take this and we're going to put the dot right on the intersection of the two lines. Okay. You may want to go back in for a second dip. Okay. All right. Now, sharp end of the tool, whatever you're using. We want to go essentially from the top of the dot and slowly move your tool through and down okay do not push hard enough to where you're actually scraping the paint but because it is fluid you should just be able to float it across and move the paint along okay now about the midsection of the line here i'm going to take the paint and do the same thing and i'm going to bring it to touch the bottom okay all right so again midline and we're going to pull it down Sometimes you might get a little space like this because there aren't too, um, these are not real long. <laughs> okay. All right. So now we've got our first little teardrop. Okay. Um, I am not wiping off my tool. Okay. This is about the only time that I will not wipe off my tool after. Okay. So then we're going to do the next one. When I'm touching it the second time, I'm not even touching my tool to the paper. It's actually just touching the top little dome of the paint itself because gravity will pull the two together. It'll pull the paint off of the tool and down onto the dot. Okay. So again, we're gonna go top, pull that down, sides, pull it down, side and down. With these ones being so small, you may not even need to do the double dip there. 
But I will tell you, if you are pulling this and you are getting a line, right, you can kind of see where you've scraped the paint, then you don't have enough paint. Okay, so go back and dip your four and go over the dot again. Or you could even take your tool and dip it in the paint and then come back. Okay, so whatever is most comfortable for you with that. And then because I am not wiping my tool off as I go, it's building up a little bit of paint. So I don't even have to do the second load of paint there. And all of this is just super gentle. Last one. Okay. Top to bottom, side and down. Ta-da. All right, now I'm gonna get my tools wiped off. Okay, we're gonna get that one put away. Now we're going to do some walked dots. What I'm going to do, um, let's start, let's start with the two. Okay. I'm going to take the two and I'm going to just do the top dot first. So we're going to place a, <clears throat> excuse me, a dot right on top of our swoosh. We're going to stay right in this guideline here. I'm still going to take the two in this case. All right. Now, the walked dots, we just want to take and put one dot here to start, okay, and one on the other side. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger than I normally would because I want to make sure that I'm filling this space in between these, okay? So for these ones, we're going to do kind of this three dot crown to start. So again, these are all size two. Okay. Let me move this around a little. As I'm doing this, if anyone ends up with any questions while I'm going through, Please don't hesitate to stop me and ask. Okay. okay. All right. Now I'm going to move down to the 1.5. And now we're going to actually start the walk. Okay. Let's go up here and do this one first. So just very light touch and just dot after dot. Okay. So there should be enough room for four of them here. Okay. All right, just let your hand slide forward there. Now 
and we're just following the curve of the swoosh as we go in. All right, so we should be here together. We're gonna move up a size and we're gonna do one more row of the dots, the walked. So we're gonna go up to a three here. We're gonna do basically the same thing, okay? I'm gonna do it a little bit slightly different with the sizes, um, but here we go, All right? Now this one, okay, let's work at this one first. This up here, is going to be a half okay so we want to put the dot right on top okay but there's not going to be room for a walked dot on the middle side okay. so just so we know don't panic if you don't have room because we're not supposed to have room that one's only going to be a half okay so we're going to get the three dot on top here All right, so then we're going to do one more three dot. All right, now these should fit kind of in the crook of the ones underneath. If it doesn't, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Okay. three. We're going to go down to the 2.5 and we're going to do another dot out on the side here. So you've got this nice little triangle hat thing going on. wipe that off and then we're going to go into the two and do the rest of our walk. All right, so we're going to start over here. Same thing, we should have enough room for four. Now, as long as we measured out everything, okay, you should see that these are just gonna come next to each other without overlapping or without leaving a whole bunch of extra space. If you're using round headed tools and you find that there's a bunch of extra space in between these and you're not quite as close to touching, um, then just know that you may want to scale up in your dot size. Okay. There we go. All right. Now 
Now we're going to do some fun stuff with hearts. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, we are going to go into the four again. Okay. So hearts are super cute and super, super easy to do with dots. Now at this point we are going to go, well, let's see. Do we want to work? I'm just thinking here for a second. Yeah, let's just do them like right here. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. All right. So we're going to do red hearts for the first one. I've got my swoosh tool. What do you use for your sushi tool? Okay. So here's how we're going to do this. We are going to make the hearts come right down into this little curve. Okay. So we want to take the four and we want to make a dot. So keep in mind that we're looking at a line like right between where the two small gold dots come in here. All right. So just imagine, and actually, you know what? Let's do this real quick. Where did my pencil go? Just make this easy, okay? Let me put this down a second. Pencil? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Now, we're gonna draw like a little imaginary line right in between, okay? And then I'm gonna put just a little mark. Okay, look right here in between. Little mark. In between. Okay, all right. We're gonna make this as simple and foolproof as we can. All right, so now we're gonna go back. So let's put this one again. What I wanna do is put a four dot right on the line up against the line that you just made. Okay, it's gonna to touch it. Then, normally we do not wanna overlap our dots. We don't want them to touch. We don't want them to bleed into each other, but guess what? We're okay with that this time. We're gonna put another dot right up against the other one. It's gonna to touch, okay? Now we're gonna take the tool, okay? And now use again, these two where they meet as a guideline, all right? And we are gonna pull the edges down, okay? Now, you can do this one of two ways. If you have enough paint, we're gonna take the four again and I'm just gonna put a little dot there, okay? Now, you might actually have enough paint just to pull this down, all right? I am barely just with feather light touches bringing this down, all right? Um, if you don't quite have enough paint, like I said, just go back in with the four, touch right in the middle, move it around. Ta-da! First heart, super easy, right? Okay, so then we're gonna go again. We're gonna use a little line as a marker, All right? I'm not cleaning my tool off in between. Right on the line, right up against it. Okay. And see what I can do here is kind of pull it through the middle and then bring it down. Swirl and down, swirl and down, see? And then if I have enough paint, just bring it in, okay? This one I was just a smidge short. I did have a little line in there. Okay, here we go. All right. So you can dunk your tool pretty darn hefty. Fill it up real good. Okay. Bring these two together. Let them kiss. Mwah. And if you like them a little longer, you could make it a little longer. Okay. You could really pull them down into that section if you want to. You can really make them a little longer. 
and don't worry a whole lot um, as long as you have very light touches and you have enough paint right as long as you're not seeing actually the paper through your dots here then it will dry flat okay you will not see these lines in your paint when it's done so you can kind of color 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 whatever do 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 to do it's fine it'll dry flat okay the, like i said the only thing that you have to worry about is if you've pushed it um and you're actually like scraping the paper with your tool when you pull the lines out just like when you do the swooshes um, because then that will show that will show when it dries okay so don't be afraid of the paint if you are using cardstock or something similar then an extra dip of the paint um, is not going to seep through okay it will not um, i have even used this particular paint um, one of my go-to things for practice is just a multimedia sketchbook I used to use that a lot more than I do now. Um, and this paint, it does not soak through that. Okay, so just, yeah, don't don't let that bother you. It won't. Okay. All right, there we go. Did you see what I did there? I had a little tiny bit of a hole and I just dunked this tool in to the paint. Actually, I'm going to make my line a little wider here. There we go. All right, building our hearts out. We're gonna do more of these later. I think they're always kind of fun. You don't get to use hearts very much in stuff. So we'll take advantage, as many as you want. All right, let's get tools wiped off. I'm going to keep a hold of my four. All right, because the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to fill up this space. We're going to do some more swishes in here. Okay. Now, these ones, sorry, four. Um, we're going to go into the heather, the purple. Let me get my tool back in my hand. Okay. Now for these ones, we're actually just going to go above this. So what we can do is about midway through this. Well, actually, let's see. Do we want it that far out? No, probably not. Okay. So give or take about halfway To the next line okay, something like that and then we're gonna do the same thing very very light touch pull 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 it's gonna meet the top of this one side bring that down just let it float on top about halfway just moving paint these ones are not going to have walk dots around with them but they're gonna have a friend okay so if you needed some swoosh practice this is it between the hearts and the swooshes that we're doing hopefully you get all the practice you need Wipe my tools off here. Okay, now that was a four again, and we're gonna move back down to a three. 
Let's go gold, since we're kind of on that path here. All right, so for these ones, let's start up here. What I want to do, we're going to put a dot right in this crook here. All right. Then I'm going to take this one, and normally I would just kind of pull it towards the center, but for this one, I just want to pull there. Okay. And there. Okay. All right. So now he's got a little buddy. I'm going to do that over here too. Okay. Now I'm going to start by pulling this side down to the point and then this one straight down. Okay. These are just little fat guys. Little tiny fatties. They should sit right above the line here that your hearts were on. Ever so tiny, ever so lightly. If you ever see me tap the tool or what appears to kind of be tapping the tool, essentially that's just making sure that all of the paint that was on the tool slides off just so that I'm getting all of it where I want it. Okay, almost done here on this one. All right, let's wipe my paint off of that. Now we have a little bit of room here and I'm gonna put just a tiny dot there, okay? This is a two. And so I'm just going to fill this little space. We're going to put it right at the bottom here. That'll go underneath the line. Okay. Now we want to, essentially we're going to fill this with a row. Okay. We're going to have some space here and I'm going to show you what we're going to do to fill that in a little bit. But now we're going to bring a line all the way across. Okay. So in order to do that one, I want to go into a three. And what color do we want that? Probably, probably the burgundy. Yeah. All right. So we sort of want this to touch. Okay. So my dots are going to be on the inside of this line right here. Okay. So we're going to make this kind of separation mark. I'm going to start right in the middle. You wipe that off again. 
little bit of water somewhere. Okay, so essentially that three should fill that space. Okay, but now all I'm gonna do is take this three, and this is gonna be maybe the boring part if you're not actually following along, if you're just watching, sorry. Um, but we're just going to go through and make a line. These are gonna be nice and close together. And they're gonna be right underneath this line. I'm trying to get the top or the outer side of the dot to touch the line. And just kiss the one next to it, right? Kind of like with the hearts. Okay. You can be as slow as fast as you like to on these. Um, I have never, this is not the most enjoyable part for me. Um, I am terrible at making lines like this. So even if I'm not showing anybody how to do it, I'm going to go a little slower. and we're going to end there. Right. Um, we, well, let's see. Let's do one more. All right. For right now, that's all I'll do. Right. So that's two beyond the line where the swoosh is. Okay. We're going to be covering this entire heart with a border. So that's why I kind of stopped there because I want to make sure that the border uh, when we do that is in the right place. Um, that this narrows and follows the line of the heart. So you'll see what I mean later. Sorry, that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now. Okay. Probably in your way, aren't I? Okay, let's see if I can move a little. So I'm not so much in the way. Let's see here. No, nope, that's not comfortable. Sorry. <laughs> I tried to move it. I tried to get out of the way. Then my dot moved. The other thing I see, um, some people do, and you can't really tell that it's, I mean, it, it looks fine. Um, but for each one of these dots, I do go back and dip, right? I'm not going to do two, uh, or almost a walk dot. Um, because even though in some situations, the size, you're not really going to be able to tell uh, that the two dots are different. Sometimes you really, really can. And I just don't want to risk that it looks kind of funky. Um, and so I dip every, every time. All right. Okay, so that was a three. Now, now that we have that one in, we have the space here to fill, right? What I want to do is probably take, let me see... We can actually do a three. I think that that'll still be fine. And we're going to do kind of a little bit of a, a crown here. So what I'm going to do 
put a dot top of the heart okay. again this is a three these ones I'm not touching together but I'm just getting them close okay almost all right and then we're gonna go up a little bit three five and then we're gonna just put a dot on top okay and that should fill that space nicely I didn't want to do this before I put the line in just in case because like I said I'm not <laughs> I'm not the best at following those lines for whatever reason it, it drives me crazy I hate doing them um but just in case you get off a little bit you can kind of adjust these crowns easier than you can the line because the line you want to be straight All right, so now we've got that part. We're gonna keep that 3.5 that we have in hand and we're gonna do one more row here. Okay, now normally I think I would probably do this gold. So that's kind of uh, where we are in our pattern. We can stick with that or I could even do, you know what, now let's do gold because um, we have some more hearts coming up and I do want those to be purple. Okay, so three, five, and I'm gonna start in the crook of one of the dots sort of towards the middle. And then we're just gonna follow this along. Now we're going to follow this along until we hit the edge of the heart. Okay, I think I can probably put one more in here. All right, then it's not really going to fit anymore, so I'm going to stop there. Let's go to the other side. Mm -hmm. Fix that one real quick. My little goof there, that's okay. I'll live. Okay. So for the little area in between, let me go down a step to a 2.5, okay? And I'm actually just gonna do locked dots. So that's two, five, two, five. See how many of these I can fit. Okay, and then lock along the edge. Okay. Okay. 
All right. You got to keep that two five in hand. And let's see, we need to at least get here to this. So that's four. We'll lock that. Sorry, turn everybody around here. All right, there's that. Okay. All right, now our next thing. So what we're going to do now is I've got some more hearts that we're going to fill in this space with. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the four. Because there isn't a secondary line here, what we can do, let's go out just a bit. Something like that. This is the harder part because I do have a line here, um, but I don't have one anywhere else, right? Because of the shape. So we're gonna start out here, just a little bit under. Let's get another heart in here. Now we can do another one. And this one is just gonna have to be sort of eyeing it. Okay, so somewhere about here. And we'll do another one somewhere about here. Okay, I'm just gonna curl this around, bring this in. So we can make three with the four size tool. Then what we can do is drop down to a two and we can actually get a couple in here. I'm just gonna follow the curve. I'm looking at the right side of my tool. Okay, these cute little ones. Let's make sure it's a two. got these little guys in there. And if we move to a three, now at this point we should have enough room for a couple of little filler swooshes. So I'm going to put that right in between here. I'm actually going to do this other one too. Okay. So same exact thing. We're going to go top to bottom. We're going to go straight down. 
and we're going to make these kind of long and thin. Okay. Now the three is not going to fit in between the next set. So I'm going to go down. Let's see. I mean, I think I'm just go down to a two. Okay, we're just gonna go right up against the edge. Even though they're small, they work exactly the same way. Now we've got this spot here and I want to fill this in with one more heart. Okay, now I've picked up a five. And I see where my center is. So I'm just going to make one more heart here right along that center line. And I'm going to bring it down here, but not quite all the way <laughs> touching the line because I, I am going to surround this. So. All right, let's bring the paint in. Make sure I don't have any lines here. I know I don't have a ton of paint there, so we'll fill that in there. Okay. Now we've got a nice big heart on the bottom. So now, let's see. Do I still have some room here? I do, but you know what? That is even pushing it there. So this tool that I use for my swishes, um, this is actually a 0 0.5 and this is a 1.5. I'm gonna take this 1.5 end and I'm going to do some miniature little swooshes um, right up alongside these ones here. All right, just kind of as a filler. And we probably want these gold. Okay, so this one is the different, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is take somewhere right around here, load this up pretty well, and then we're going to place it down and just gently pull. They're going to be real nice. And then delicate. Let's see. Pull that one down even farther. Okay. Just follow the line of the other swoosh. Okay. These ones down here, I think I'm going to have to a little kind of around okay there okay all right i still have like this little tiny space here i'm just going to use this 1.5 Do some nice little filler dots. Okay, there's that. Now to fill in this, let's go back up to maybe, what have we got room for? About a 2.5-ish? Yeah, okay. We're gonna do one last set of swooshes. Okay, so just go ahead and make a nice generous dot okay. on either side of the heart. Yep. 
Now we want to take this this time and we really want to follow this curve. So instead of going straight through the middle, I'm going to take the side instead and I'm going to draw here. Okay. Then I'm just going to take this side and kind of curve it down there. Same here. I'm going to start over here. Bring that down. Actually, I can probably bring this one down a little farther too. And yeah, kind of ran out of paint. So let me get a little more in there. There we go. Okay. We have a tiny bit of space here, so if you want to, you can drop in another set of, well, I call it a crown. I don't know what it's really called or if there is a name for it. Um, you know what? Let's see if I can do. Just to keep the design kind of consistent. Now for the long part. Okay. We want to take about a 3.5 and we are so close to being done because now all we need to do is fill out the edges. Okay. 3.5. Um, I'm actually going to get the burgundy. I need a smidge more. You know what I'm going to do real quick and I don't know if you guys see so I've got a spot in my heart here looks like where the paint was just a little thin so I'm just going to touch that up real quick there okay oh and there's one right there too All right, we're gonna put that away, 3.5. We're gonna start right at the bottom. And we're gonna go all the way around the heart. We're just gonna follow that outline. And I know, I'm sorry, this is probably not the most exciting part. This is going to take a minute or two. If you're doing it along with me, fantastic. Let's just chuck in here. Um, if you're not and you're just watching, hey, maybe it's tea time again. Maybe it's time for a snack. One thing I'll tell you in case you're faster than me at this, when you get towards the center of the heart, since we're starting at the bottom, leave yourself some room. Do not do the dots here right away. Um, stop before you get there. I'll show you why. Okay. 
and this burgundy dries so much darker so rich and pretty All right, so I'm gonna stop there. And let's go to the other end. Let's see here. getting so close to finishing this once this is done as well we are going to put some micro dots around the outside um, so probably like a 0 0.5 we'll do that in gold we'll put that in all of the little crooks between the two dots all along the outside we'll get that a nice finish and then as long as all of the dots on the inside are dry at that point if you want to you can actually do top dots I don't know necessarily that I would do it with the gold um, because there is so much gold but either a lighter or possibly even darker purple I do have a darker purple that tends to look pretty good with this all right now that we're coming to the close here what I like to do is put a dot here at the center right because I want that to be even Okay, let's see. And then I'm going to make these dots. I'm just going to touch them a little bit lighter. Make them a little smaller. Whoops, that one bled over. It's okay. There. All right, that way you have a dot in the center. All right, so that's the main, that, that's that. Okay. Now, let's see. I have, so we want to do the micro dots, but let's see. Now this is definitely not dry here, but these ones are. What have I got for purple? Let's see. I have a slightly darker that might be nice. Sorkin. I'll show you what I mean before we get into all the little micro dot. Okay. So essentially all of these were a four. So what if we go down to a three? Just 
add a top dot wherever you want. Just to give it a little bit more dimension. Now these ones I know are going to be dry. I can see that they're no longer shiny. The ones on the very bottom are not okay. The other thing that I could try, I haven't done this with my previous ones, but what we could also do Just like that. Same exact process. Put a little part on top. I don't think I'll be able to do that for the extra small ones. <laughs> Those are a little itty bitty tiny tiny. Um, but these will work. And then if you want to do something with the red ones as well, I don't really have a, well, I don't know what color I really would want to use on top of these ones, unless I just lightened my burgundy. But. I'm just kind of drawing like a little v-shape with my tool for these ones there get a little accent on them there we go okay micro dots here we come 0 0.5 okay now this is probably the only spot where you could get away with like I'm doing here is doing two dots and then dipping. As I do this, all of the grid lines that I did today were done with just a standard pencil or mechanical pencil. So once everything has completely dried, I probably won't even do this until tomorrow. No rush for me personally. Um, but once this is all completely dried, then I have an art eraser, the 4B. And then I just go over the whole thing. It won't mess up your paint, provided it's nice and dry and get all of the grid lines out. You can literally just erase right over the top of the paint and everything. Make sure that you get all the little lines out of all the little cracks. Once I get these done, I'll also show you the inside. I don't know if anyone else is worried about it, but I know in the beginning I was. And as we talked about, you really shouldn't have any issues with paint seeping through this, um, providing you're not just using like computer paper or, you know, standard lined paper or something like that. As long as it's some sort of a card stock. Now these I probably could have made myself. I could have just bought the white card stock and, and folded them or 
cut them to size. Um, but I actually did just go to Amazon and I bought, I, I can't remember exactly how many. It was like 50, 50 cards and envelopes, something like that. So. All right, there we go. Okay. Now, if you find any empty spaces, some of these other areas, you can go back in and fill them with something else. Okay. All right. Do this delicately. But there's absolutely nothing inside, no ridges. There's no paint lines or anything. Okay. Like I said, that basically, that should be it. Um, unless you want to do your own other little sparkly things in there um i do have uh some gems things like that you know every now and again i go take a trip to the dollar store um and i find myself you know some little sticky gems or or something like that or whatever you just want to put on that um but there we go that should be done minus taking the grid lines out okay and now you can see why um you can always come back to and make sure that any of these little spaces on the inside are filled right so that you have all of this completely drawn in um if you decided not to do a heart if you're going to do the total um if you're just going to do it as a mandala you actually could just stop here right you can carry this pattern all the way around as a circle and then um, instead of stopping with these ones this four you can actually spread these out and do a whole nother row around this so you would have uh, this is an entire row. And then these ones um, you could also do as a row on the outside if you wanted to or however you wanted to kind of fancy up the edges. But that would give you a full round mandala as well. So it doesn't have to be a heart. Okay. Well, I certainly thank you all so much for stopping by. And I certainly look forward to seeing what you guys have painted as well. Um, if you have painted along, I would love to see what you have done. And the way that you can share that is I do have a Discord nowadays. Um, if you are not familiar with Discord or if you just want to know how to get to the server, actually check the YouTube channel I'm right on top, right in front. I actually have a step-by-step -step guide on how to get there. All right. I look forward to seeing you guys there. Um, love to chat. Love to see your work. And I hope to see you again sometime soon. You guys take care. Have a fantastic weekend and enjoy May 14th. Happy Valentine's. Bye-bye.